All right, good morning. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. So on today's episode, I'm gonna continue working on, look at that truck, beautiful. Continue working on stuff for the Smoking the Bandit trailer. So where I left off in the last episode was I used the Vivor plasma cutter and I cut all that junk out of there. I still haven't hauled it all outside. I just kind of wrapped up and uh, and called her a day last Saturday. So this is right where I left off. Uh, so I'll clean this mess up. And the goal today is gonna be to try and get this reefer shell looking like the one used in the Smokey and the Bandit film on the front of the van trailer. So it needs body work, it needs primer, it needs paint. And yeah, it'll look, uh, it'll look really sharp on there. Then I gotta get my prowler out of here. And you guys are probably wondering, well, why is he parking his prowler in the shop? Didn't he used to park that in his house garages? And there's a reason. There's actually something very cool in both of those stalls that, uh, that you're gonna get to see in a future episode. But we'll just leave that secret for now and get rolling. some inventory here of where we're at. Now this is the back side of the of the unit so this will be where it bolts onto the trailer. So I guess what I'll do next is I got my this was my workbench when I was working on the Iron Duke so I'm gonna repurpose it. I'll take these two by fours off of here and then I'll I'll hold it up there and I'll mark out these holes and then I'll kind of cut out the size of it and then we can use this as a template when we put it up against the uh, the front of the van trailer there we can mark out the holes and then drill them and then I guess I'll start I'll start sanding on this thing I guess the other thing I need to do as well is last week I noticed that one of the doors here broke off from there. So what I might do, obviously this is steel and this is aluminum. I can't weld those together. So maybe I'll, ideally it'd be nice to have Blake here from Fly Weld Fabricate because he could probably do a better job than me. Bet your ass on that boy. Well that one's broken too. But what I might try and do is just weld little tabs and weld that back on there. So I might spark up my welder and do that. And then I gotta get the doors as well that go here. Okay. So Cass, the fan that gave me this, this reefer shell, he also sent me the brackets that go with this. So, yeah, or something like that. Now, what I'll probably do is, should I hang these and paint them? And then mount them after they're painted? Yeah, that'd probably be best, right? Because that way, at least the inside will be painted as well. Yeah, I'll hang them and paint them separately, just hang them from a ladder. But as you can see, there's a little bit of body work that needs doing on both of them. So I'll hammer out the dents as best I can. I'll just use a thin layer of body filler. But yeah, I don't think this will be too hard to, to get it looking sharp again.
How do you do an upside down N? I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get this wrong. Um, oh, I think I did that right. There we go. Not that pretty, but it'll work. And if you're new here, is that right? I don't think that's right. <laughs> this is what it's going on. It's gonna go right up there. Can't wait. So I was trying to figure out why there was such a gap between the, the hinge and the door. And then I realized that it probably just got something hit it and knocked it away. That's what broke the welds off. So I was just giving them a little hammer back. Something like that. All right, I'll see if I can't throw some bubble gum on there and see if it holds. That is thin. Let's turn the heat down a little. There. Not the prettiest. Oh, it welded it closed. <laughs> uh, so that hinge is no longer functional. Oh, weak. I think you need to go back to welding school, Mark. All right, try it again. Maybe I'll up it to one level. Get a little more penetration. There. Some is good, more is good. <laughs> yeah, I know it's amateur hour, but a grinder and paint will make it look nice. So taking a closer look at the doors for the front, this one's actually in really good shape. It's quite solid, but for whatever reason, this one got some dirt and moisture hung up underneath and it just rotted it out. So I'm trying to debate if I could just cut this out of here. I don't have any sheet metal. The only thing I could find was some galvanized metal. And I don't really, I'm not too excited about welding galvanized because I could just weld a, a strip back here. But what I might do is cut it out, cut out the, the cancer here, and I might just build it back with fiberglass and just build that up. I think that might be might be a little easier. Plus, it's gonna be easier to work with to sand it down as well, but yeah. Is it the right way? Probably not, but it's my way. So that's what we'll do. So similar to what I did on Snowman. Now granted that was a fiberglass fender, but this will still work. This will work the same. As all the auto body professionals out there just yelling at the screen, you can't use that. Watch me. Oh, smells delicious. Of course, I measure everything. My wife gets so annoyed when I cook because I, I don't measure anything. And then when a meal turns out, she'll be like, oh, can you make this again? No, no, I can't. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a one-time deal, huh? Yeah. 
Look at that, it's just like decorating, decorating a cake. Now if I was smart, I'm out of practice here. If I was smart, I would have put this down first because it needs glue on the bottom side. So we'll just do that. Oh, nice. So you're just trying to get the resin to really soak into the, whew, that's got quite a smell to it, to really soak into the, to the fiberglass weave. That's where the strength comes from. Now you're gonna to wanna to wear rubber gloves when you're doing this because you get these little fiberglass feels all over. And they are hard to get off your skin, trust me. All right, let that harden up. And then tackle it from the other side. I gotta admit, that thing's pretty slick. So normally, what I use to knock old paint off is the Milwaukee Orbital. Now, I damn near wore this thing out. The, uh, the little knob there barely controls the speed anymore. I use this thing to sand the entire truck and sleeper on the snowman truck. And uh, it worked really well. So I normally use this, but I actually, Vivor sent me this recently. Now this is called a polisher, and normally it's used, it's got an abrasive wheel, it's wearing down, I should probably put a new one on there. But normally it's used to polish aluminum or stainless steel. But I've been using it to actually knock off full paint and it does it in a hurry. So I'll probably keep using that. This is a, this is a neat little tool. So if you're interested in one, I've got a link in the description down below you can check out. So the reason I pivoted over from that to this is because there's an expression I like to use called making use of the minutes inside the minutes. For those that are new here, they may not realize that this is just a part-time hobby. I have a day job, Monday to Friday. So Saturdays are the only days that I actually work on trucks. So my family is kind of, uh, it's my sacred truck Saturday and they, uh, they humor me with this nonsense. So what I do is I try and get as much done, as much work completed as, as possible in that eight or nine hour window. So that's why I just, I go hard, I film it all, and then I slice it up and then that's the episode that you see on Thursday. So if that's why you're wondering why do these trucks take so long to build or why aren't the episodes longer, that's kind of the reason. But yeah, so with that, I'm gonna keep, I'll keep knocking off as much of this old paint as I can and get it nice and smooth. Looks like there's been some gouges in the aluminum. So we'll probably, I've got some nice uh, glaze that I'll probably use for that to fill that in. But yeah, knock this down and with any luck, Get it, uh, get it ready for primer, we'll prime it, and then I might sneak a few hours of Sunday to actually throw some paint on there and then get this finished. Because I need this stall back for a secret. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Just make sure that's tucked in nice and tight on the bend there. Yeah, not that pretty yet, but it will be. Okay, back to working on the reefer.
Man, I have to say that Vibor polisher gets the job done. I mean, look how quick that's, that's taken all this off of there. I am definitely going to use, I'm probably going to need about a dozen wheels, but I'm definitely going to use that on the peat because that is slick. Sure throws a lot of dust up in the air. That's why I had the, uh, the drum fan going to, to push all this outside. But yeah, I mean, it can't get everywhere, obviously, because of the size, but I can, I can clean that up. I've got other tools for that. So a little more here, a little more on the other side. And then, yeah, I'll start using some, some glaze. Those are the gouges I was talking about there and there. You can kind of see. But some thin, thin layer of glaze will work, work good for that. Sweet! Making progress. So I was just doing a little body work, banging out the dent on what I thought was the good door. And then I saw all this rotten stuff down here. So break all this out of here and do the same thing I did there. And just build it up with fiberglass. So definitely not as bad, but definitely still rotten. So I figured I'd lay it down so I could actually get the top here. And you can see it's just got years of weathering. I don't know what kind of organics those are, but I gotta sand that off. Now this this grill here is pretty is pretty chewed up. And I guess I could get Blake to build me another one. But I think the idea is just to is a, as a safety device so you don't touch the hot muffler or the spinning fan. So I don't think it's really needed for your for this truck because of course this thing's never going to be operational again. So I might just take it off of here and leave it off. Of course all the bolts are just breaking. You'll never see this anyway unless you're right on top of the trailer. Okay. We're going to leave that though because the uh, the flapper is cool. All right, put a new wheel on and get going again with my polisher. Ah, good movie. Yeah. Nice. Nothing but net. I don't know what the deal is, but it's just, it's really struggling to get this off of here. It's like there's four coats of paint. So I don't know if someone painted these multiple times. I suppose that's possible because they they would be right at the front of the reefer. So they would take all the, the rain and snow and they would probably be the first to get eroded going down the road. So maybe that's why they just had multiple coats of paint. But man, it's, it's damn near taking the entire wheel just to get this one panel done. Okay, well, one more, and then a few more spots, and by golly, this thing's gonna be almost ready for primer. Yeah, we got nothing but the best tools here at Twin Stick Garage. So, I'm gonna try and use this, a railway tie, to remove this big dent. Let's see if it works. Oh, 
duck yolk. So, next up, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, short strand fiberglass filler. Fill in the holes and the dents. Now, I showed this in an earlier episode, but isn't this slick? So, normally I've been using cardboard, and of course all the viewers out there are like, you can't mix with cardboard, you'll get impurities in there. So then I bought a hard board, but then of course, I know when it dries, you can crack it and break it off of there, but you inevitably have little bits of leftover from your last time you put some filler down. So this time I'm gonna use this, and then once you're done with it, you just tear off a sheet, and you got a nice fresh board to work on. So give this a go, see how it works. Bead a hardener over the top. Stir this mess together. Now I like this short strand fiberglass because it spreads really nice and it, when it dries it is like concrete. It is a lot more solid and I think the little fiberglass strands that are in there help to give it strength as opposed to regular Bondo. Now I do like Bondo as a finishing finishing uh, filler, but to fill in a dent to start with, you can't beat this short strand fiber. How about with this? Oh, I can drive any forking thing around. Watch the beer, watch the beer. start writing comments about what I'm doing wrong. I'm not a professional body man and I'm sure you can tell, but I try. Don't lose your head son, you still got a lot of boogieing to do. Not perfect, but not bad. And that's what I aim. That's what I aim for here at Twin Stick Garage. Okay, I'll mix up another batch for the other side here. Oh yeah. So check this out. Look at that. <laughs> and a fresh Bob Ross palette. I love it. Nice. Take some pure titanium oak. That is a good gimmick. As the viewers are typing, there's going to be more Bondo than steel on that. Ten kilometers an hour, not miles per hour. Oh, 
Hold up in that car wash, gentlemen. A friend of mine was asking me, he goes, do you think you could do the movie front to back? Do everyone's lines? And initially I, I said, no, I, I'd probably mess up a few, but I might just be able to. And I was laughing with my wife saying, I should, uh, I should do an episode of just me doing the whole Smoking the Bandit movie, all the parts. And I said, well, that would probably get pretty old. Even I get tired of hearing the sound of my own voice. All right, minutes inside the minutes. So while that's dry, I'm gonna clean up around all these bolts. So it is a lovely day out there, which is great, because I can have the door open, blow all the, the dust out, and I don't have to hide in here underneath the furnace. But uh, yeah, it's getting late in the day too. And I know I say that a lot, but I mean, this, this stuff just takes time. Body work is one of the biggest time eaters. I find body work and electrical just gobbles up the day. But I'm determined, and determined to get this thing into primer before I go in and watch some hockey. So, so I'll keep at it. Get this glaze is starting to pack up. Getting close. Getting close. Because Fred just don't like grease. All right, Mark, back to work. Okay, so what I was doing there was I got this uh, guide coat stuff off of Amazon. I actually saw it on, uh, oh, what's, a, what's a, my favorite auto body guy's name on YouTube? I can't think of it right now. It'll come to me. But anyway, I saw this on YouTube and I ordered this stuff. And it actually works pretty good. So the idea is, is you simply rub it on there and then yeah, I'm obviously using an air board, but even if you just were using a long board and sanding that, what that does is it shows you the low spots will stay black and the high spots will obviously be cleaned off and either be metal or, or filler. So then you know where to put those last, last little uh, layers of, of filler in there to get this level. So I think this is the final piece. I get these doors cleaned up and actually, here I'll flip this around so you can see it. Yeah. For those that said the earlier in the video, 
and we're typing comments saying you can't just put fiberglass filler in rust spots. Yeah, you can. Look how nice that turned out. Okay, so I'll keep grinding on these for a little while longer. And once these are done, I think I can hang everything. I guess still got to put up a tarp. And uh, yeah, I'll be ready to start spraying. Can't wait. Quality works like eight hours of work for 10 minutes of fun. Where is it? Where's the rest? <laughs> 